Hi, so in this video we are going to see about the hormonal methods of contraception. But before we proceed, I would like to remind you that this is a video specifically for first year MBBS students who has got contraception as a topic in physiology. Because as you proceed to the other years when you learn more about pharmacology and gynecology, you learn that there are more advanced uh, portions to this topic. So here in this video, we are going to discuss just the preliminary aspects which a first year MBBS students need to know. Okay. So when we say hormonal contraceptive pills, we generally mean the oral contraceptive pills or the OCPs. So they can be of many types of which the major ones are combined pill, progesterone only pill, postcoital pill. Right. So we'll see more about each one by one. So combined pill. So just as a name suggests, you can you can guess that it is a combination of something, right? So it is basically a combination of synthetic estrogens and synthetic progestins. So synthetic estrogens means ethyl estradiol and synthetic progestins means norethestrone, norgestrel or levonorgestrel. So basically combined pill means it's a combination of synthetic estrogens and synthetic progestins. It contains the synthetic estrogens are called are one, one type of synthetic estrogen is ethyl estradiol and another type of progesterone. Synthetic progesterones are norethestrone, norgestrel or levonorgestrel. So see here this is a picture showing Mala N which was uh, promoted by the government of India. Here you can see that is written levonorgestrel that is progesterone and ethyl estradiol that is synthetic estrogens. Okay. So Examples of combined pill is Mala N and Mala D, both which were uh, promoted by the government of India for contraception. So now what we are more concerned about is in physiology, we are more concerned about the mechanism of action of this pill. How does supplementing estrogen and progesterone to a woman produce contraception? So we will see how that works. So see progesterone will inhibit the LH surge and estrogen will inhibit the FSH secretion both by negative feedback mechanism. So you remember we know that from the pituitary you've got hormones which act on the ovary right but when when there are more estrogen and progesterone there will be negative feedback inhibition thus there will be decreased secretion of LH and FSH from the pituitary okay. So by negative feedback there is a decrease in the LH and FSH level. So what happens? Because there is a decrease in the FSH and LH level, there will be inhibition of development of the ovarian follicles. The follicle will not develop properly, right? And so there will be decreased estrogen level. Thus, there won't be any mid cycle LH surge. Thus, there won't be any ovulation. Because for ovulation to occur, first of all, there should be proper development of the ovarian follicle. So it produces more estrogen, which in turn will produce the LH surge, which in turn will produce the ovulation, right? But none of these will occur because there is low levels of FSH and LH in the first place. Okay. So that is the mechanism of action of combined only pill. Not only this, not only this, not only that the ovulation does not occur properly. There are many other secondary effects also. So we will see what they are. So in the cervix, the secretion becomes thick. Why? Because due to the action of progesterone and this will in turn prevent the entry of sperms. Okay. So in the uterus. In the cervix, the, the sperm entry is disabled. So, there is no sperm. Next, in the ovary, the follicular growth is inhibited. So, there is no ovum. ovum. And even if there is a ovum and a sperm, the implantation will be inhibited. How? Why? Because in the uterus, the estrogen will make it more hyperproliferative. And thus, implantation will not occur. So, the sperm is cut out. The ovum is cut out. And even if they, they get fertilized, the uterine bed or the endometrial bed is cut out. Okay, so that is a mechanism of action. So see here, this is a picture showing the cervical changes. See the cervix is made very thick. The cervical mucus is made thick so that the sperms cannot enter the uterus. Right? Then ovulation is inhibited so that there is no proper ova, and also the endometrium. There are, uh, there is alteration in the endometrium. Endometrium is made hyperproliferative. So, implantation will not occur. Okay. So, now what is the instruction that you usually give to the patients? So, we tell them to take it orally every day for 21 days starting from the 5th day of menstrual cycle. That means after bleeding. 
and then you take it for 21 days that so up till 25th day and after that you give a gap of 7 days so when you give that gap what happens is there is a bleeding now this bleeding is not actually menstruation it is called withdrawal bleeding okay so this is how the patients are instructed to take the oral contraceptive pills next what are the contraindications the absolute contraindications are women having carcinoma breast or uterus because OCPs are considered to promote cancer breast as well as cancer of the endometrium that is why we if they have carcinoma breast or uterus if they have a history of that we ask them not to take it next liver diseases because again it is harmful for the liver so those who have liver diseases are, are advised not to take them next hyperlipidemia because these have the ability to increase the body cholesterol levels thus those who have history of hy uh, hyperlipidemia are advised not to take the OCPs and the relative contraindications are it should not be given to the women of age group above 35 years because in general for those women their risk for getting carcinoma breast is more so thus we advise them not to take it okay so these are the absolute as well as relative contraindications for oral contraceptive pills so the next type of pill that we're going to see is the progesterone only pill or the mini pill so just like the name suggests there is only progesterone in it right so it is also called mini pill and it basically contain low doses of progesterone or norethestron of around 0.35 milligram or norgestrel of around 0.075 milligram okay so here you can see this is a picture of easy pill or it's a type of uh, oral emergency con uh, oral mini pill that is progesterone only pill that was promoted by the government of india so here it is taken daily through the whole of the menstrual cycle now how does this help it prevents fertility without inhibiting the ovulation because it acts on the cervical mucus and makes it thick and it also decreases the motility of the fallopian tubes so there are two methods by which progesterone only pill can inhibit fertilization one it makes the cervical mucus mucus thick so that the sperms cannot enter and it also decreases the motility of the fallopian tube so that the ovum cannot travel or it uh, the sperms cannot uh, reach the ovum okay so either way it prevents fertilization now another important point to remember is that it does not inhibit ovulation okay the next important pill is the post coital pill or morning after pill so it is used only in emergency cases like rape contraceptive failure or un and unprotected sex so the mechanism of action of post coital pill is that it causes hypermotility of the fallopian tubes and of the uterus so see once there is uh, ovulation the ovum has to travel through the fallopian tube and raise the uterus right so here it causes hypermotility of the fallopian tubes and the uterus so that the fertilization will not take place okay and also even if the fertilization has occurred it prevents the implantation of the blastocyst okay it prevents the implantation of the blastocyst so that is how post coital pill works so in general for these hormone or, or oral contraceptive pills pills what are the advantages and disadvantages the advantages are that it is usually 100% effective when compared to your mechanical methods of contraception but the disadvantages are that it can cause hypertension and can lead on to myocardial infarction there is an increased risk of thromboembolism there can be metabolic effects like diabetes and obesity carcinogenic effects like carcinoma breast and carcinoma cervix so these are the disadvantages of oral contraceptive pills Next, another type of hormonal contraception is depot preparations. So, depot preparations means they are basically long-acting drugs which are equally effective. Okay, so they are basically injectable preparations. They can be injectable preparations or subdermal implants or even vaginal rings. So, they are long-acting and the advantage is that you don't have to take a pill every day. So, there is more patient compliance for this. Okay, so we'll see about the subdermal implants first. So the subdermal implants it is usually kept under the skin usually in this uh, in the arm region so the advantage is that you can avoid taking the pill oral pill and that the contraceptive effect lasts for a long period now not only a subdermal implant you can also keep it as a vaginal ring 
okay so the vaginal ring which contains this preparation can be kept in the cervical region okay now what are the disadvantages the disadvantages are that it can even lead to sterility so you can't expect a temporary uh, or it cannot be used as a spacing method because it can lead to sper sterility and there can also be alterations in the menstrual bleeding pattern so that is a disadvantage the advantage is that you don't have to take a pill every day and the contraceptive effectively lasts for a very long time disadvantage is that it can lead to sterility and there can be al alteration in the menstrual bleeding pattern okay so thus in this video we've seen about the oral contraceptive pills we've seen about the combined pill progesterone only pill and the post coital pill and also about the depot preparations which can be injectable subdermal or vaginal ring so i hope this concept is clear thank you